Kutasto vijitendriya yukta ityuchate yogi samaloshtashma kanchanaha. Namaste. So this is Bhagavad Gita, chapter 6, verse 8. Really, I wanted to give this particular talk to make a certain point. And then I remembered this verse makes the same exact point. <laughs> so uh, good old Bhagavad Gita. But none of the translations that I can find really do it justice. You know, the, the deep meanings of each and every word are critical to the point that I'm trying to make. So let's look at the words individually and then together. Jnana, of course, Jnana means self-realization. Jnana yoga is the highest yoga. It's the yoga for one who has already realized Brahman. So when the Supreme Brahman is realized, one has a certain view. And this view can be summarized as Ajatavada. Ajatavada means he sees the world as unborn. The world was never created. The world doesn't exist. Only Brahman exists. That's jnana. And then the very next word is vijnana. Now we know the word vijnana from the five sheaths, the koshas. There's the Anamaya Kosha, the physical body, the Pranamaya Kosha, which is the energy body, the prana. Then there's the Manomaya Kosha, the mental body. Then the Vijnana Maya Kosha. Vijnana means intelligence. It's the active part of the mind. The Manomaya is passive. It's reaction. A certain situation comes up and the mind reacts to it. It brings up so many upadis and vasanas from the past. But when one takes the active role and deliberately asserts one's will, that is vijnana, that's intelligence. Now, some people call jnana knowledge. But I don't think it's knowledge. I think it's direct perception of the truth. Vijnana is more like what is known as knowledge or wisdom, even better. <clears throat> the mind can be programmed with all kinds of information, but that's still the mind, huh? Manomaya kosha. The intelligence is the one that discriminates, that takes a stand that performs acts of will and is the root of desires, especially the desire to have existence as an individual. So even though it's real, some kind of knowledge, huh? it's maya, <laughs> vijnana maya kosha. Now, maya is different from maya, in Sanskrit, but here they mean almost the same thing, a creation, a state of being, which is essentially illusory. So even though our intelligence is in illusion because of conditioning, because of desires and so on, we can still use it to attain self-realization, jnana. So actually, 
Vijnana is lower, Jnana is higher. And what about Jnana and Vijnana? Triptatma. Tripta means satisfied. And Atma means the soul or the self. So Triptatma means satisfied in your soul. Huh? Deeply satisfied. So satisfied that there are no more desires. So satisfied that the whole world just looks like trash. Uh, we spoke about this in the previous video. That to one who is realized, this whole material world is just junk. It's useless. Huh? In fact, it's suffering. So even the highest position in the material world, Lord Vishnu, huh, is suffering. Even the goddess, although she has no desires, still she has to tolerate so many things, so much nonsense, kill so many demons. And then she has to watch as Shiva destroys all her work of creation at the end. So this world, the whole thing from beginning to end is unsatisfactory. It's temporary and it's not self. Well, then what is self? That's what jnana is all about. Jnana means knowledge or direct experience of the self with a capital S. Self means Brahman. Self means pure, unconditioned awareness. So, one who realizes this becomes triptatma, deeply satisfied. And then, what comes next? Kutashto, kutashto. Kuta means a division. And staha means standing, placed, taking a position. So the three divisions, uh, the whole world is divided into three, or four if you include the transcendent stage. For example, in the Mahashodashi Mantra, the Panchadashi Mantra, within that, contained within that, is divided into three kutas. Each line of the Panchadasi Mantra is one kuta. So one who takes his stand in these kutas or the next kuta beyond, which is the transcendent kuta, huh? and if he's Atma Vijnana, then he's certainly in the transcendental stage. Uh, so, jnana vijnana triptatma kutasto vijitendriyaha. Vijita means conquered, conqueror. Conqueror. And indriyaha means the senses. He is the conqueror of the senses. What does it mean to conquer the senses? To lose interest in them. To turn one's attention away from them and onto the transcendent self. So, what kind of a person is this? Yukta. Yukta means joined, connected. Huh? One who is in yoga is described as yukta, connected with the Supreme. So, as we have shown on our chart, I'm going to show this so many times that eventually you guys are going to actually get it that there are four stages of this yoga, karma yoga, bhakti yoga, raja yoga, and at the end, jnana yoga. So one who is jnana vijnana is so satisfied, he's yukta, fully connected with the Supreme. And then what? Itcha, ityuchyate. He this kind of person, iti, uchate, is called yogi, a yogi, a real yogi. Not like, 
you know, the exercise class down at the, at the gym, huh? <laughs> That's not real yoga. That's just the introduction of the introduction to yoga. <laughs> real yoga means complete joining, yuktaha, with the Supreme. And that gives rise to this triptatma, deep satisfaction of the soul. Sama means all the same. Loshtrashma. Loshtrashma kanchana. He sees everything the same, whether pebbles, stones, or gold. Now what's the difference between pebbles and stones? Huh? Pebbles are small stones, that's all. So he doesn't see any differentiation by quantity. Whether it's pebbles or stone, it's still the same stuff. And, the, and also, he sees gold the same. I mean, pebbles are very easily available anywhere. Stone, you can go to the nearest hill and find plenty of stone. But gold is considered very rare. It's qualitatively different. But to the yogi, it's all stone, it's all dirt, <laughs> it's earth. He doesn't see any qualitative difference between stone and gold. He doesn't see any qualification of good and bad, right and wrong, huh? here and there, now and then, future and past. See, he doesn't see any of this. He only sees awareness, awareness of awareness. This is the highest stage of yoga. So one who only sees this has no interest anymore in material relationships. In fact, he sees more material relationships as troublesome. Even his own relationship with his body is nothing but trouble nothing but suffering. Still, out of compassion, as long as the body still exists by the prarabdha karma that was created in previous lives, the yogi tries his best to elevate others, to bring them to a similar understanding, to bring them to a similar consciousness. So what is enlightenment then? Enlightenment is a view That's all. It's not knowledge. It's not understanding. It's not mystical experiences or anything like that. Huh? Experiences have a beginning and an end. They're temporary. Well, so spiritual experiences are nice, but they're still just experiences. The thing that never changes is awareness. We have always been pure awareness. We will always be pure awareness. We always are pure awareness. So this is what never changes, and this is Brahman. So we are Brahman. Nothing is anything but Brahman, but because of desires, because we wanted to be an individual, Maya says, okay, here's some upadis. Huh? Upadis are limiting adjuncts that take the complete Brahman and close it off, narrow it down until only a part of it is left. And that's our individual consciousness, which is very strongly tied to the senses. The senses are part of the body. The body is also an upadi. The body is a vehicle for karma in the form of vasanas. Vasanas are tendencies, habits which are created in previous lives. And like I said, the mind is reactive. So as soon as we experience a certain situation, all the memories of similar situations come up in the form of tendencies. What to do, how to respond, how to react to this situation. But one who develops intelligence is able to ignore or counteract 
these reactive tendencies. And by an effort of will, this is the practice of yoga, he joins himself to the Supreme because that's who he really is. That's what we have always been and always will be. So this view huh, that aham brahmasmi, I am Brahman, I am pure awareness of awareness, and everything else that appears to be is nothing but maya, nothing but illusion, nothing but the upadis that are restricting my consciousness. One can elevate oneself by an effort of will. And soon, by practice, this effort of will becomes really effortless, just another habit. And at that point, one can say that he is liberated soul, that he is jivan mukta. He is alive, he's been born, but he won't die because Brahman is the eternal truth. Aum Tatsa, Aum Shakti Aum.